This is Court. And this is Ashley. And we are coming at you live from Boston on a little Friday morning recording sesh. It's a very you can do both moment. Yes. Court was out at the concert last night. We'll get into the details, but I actually haven't even asked her about it off camera because I wanted the pod to experience it as well. How was Noah Khan last night? Uh I mean, he's always just the best. He always ever. Hits. Yeah. But I was so proud of him last night. He played at Fenway and it was the first night of two that he's going to be playing there. And he was just so magical and talented and humble and he's just the best. He he really is. And I hate to say it, but I am a very much an OG fan. Like I had been fa- a fan of his since before he came out with this album that he went really viral with. And I've seen him in a concert, no joke, like six times Yeah, um, over the past several years, like maybe six years. And it's just cool to see someone start from literally nothing yeah. to, to get to where he is now. And he made a lot of references to it last night because he grew up in New England. His parents live in Vermont. He lived in Watertown for a while, like when he was starting his musical career. And so it was just a very full circle moment for him. And you could feel the energy in the in the stadium. And specifically with him and his music, it's not catchy, chorusy songs that anyone could just jump into and know the words. Yeah, you have to. You have to really intentionally you have listen. To study them. He's telling a story through yes. his lyrics, and there were points in the show where he just stopped singing, and you can hear crystal clear the audience like enunciating every syllable to every word of his song and he literally started crying during one of his songs he's like this is I'm gonna cry someone in the industry shared with him last year that you know you'll be able to play play Fenway Park maybe in the next 10 years and he was able to do that a year later and sold out two shows so it was just it was so so amazing it was just so fun Matt and I got very last minute tickets um, and it was worth, honestly, every penny. I was contemplating going again tonight <laughs> because Sophia and Camila were like, wait, should we go? And I was yeah. like, well, I'm going tonight, but maybe. I think it's cool that you were also at the first of his two shows. Yeah. I feel like the first show there, like, that's such a big moment for him. Yeah. So I. He kept saying, this is the best night of my life. This is yeah. the best. Night. And I'm sure yeah. artists say that all the time, yeah. but. I, he meant it. He meant it. <laughs> he definitely meant it. I was going to say it looked amazing, but I haven't seen anything just yet. But I am I know it was amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy you guys got to go. Courtney's been manifesting this for, like, ever. Like, you always knew you were going to go. You guys were just like, no, we're just going to do it very last minute. Yeah. Yeah, it was, the, it, was in the, it was in the calendar literally yeah. for months, but yeah. no tickets were involved. Because yeah. it was so ex- – it, it was thousands of dollars for a ticket. It's like right. when – I don't think anyone should ever be charging that much, no. but that's like a Drake level or a bad bunny. Like yeah. that is really expensive, especially for Fenway Park where you can't see anything at all unless you're on the field. But how was your night last night? How was your week? It was week? good. It was just a little wine night in with a friend. That's my energy that I need this week. Yeah. As much as like I would have loved the concert, like I am not in that. Yeah, you had to protect your energy. Yeah, protect, which is such a great sign. Okay, <laughs> starting now, count the amount of times you say energy in this episode. I love that. <laughs> it's going to be it's, a lot. It's going to break, we're going to break a record. Because today we're going to be talking all things energy. One of my favorite topics. I know that we said morning routine is a favorite topic, but energy is, I think, tops it for me. <laughs> For me, yes. Uh, let's not forget, Courtney and I wanted to get matching tattoos that said energy. Oh my gosh, Maybe you're we so still right. do that. I would still do that. Yeah, me too. Because energy is everything. Energy is how you become successful. It's how you read people in a room. It's how you find your soulmate. It truly is everything. And I'm going to break out a lot of cheesy quotes this episode. I'm in the mood for that. I Perfect. So one of my favorite quotes is, <laughs> be the energy that you want to attract. I love that. I have been dealing with this recently. Mm -hmm. So my energy has been low, kind of just not my, not my best self. Um, and I have been feeling low vibrations Mm -hmm. and yesterday 
was the start of just like kind of a next chapter for me. I was like, all right, today is the start. I am going to change my energy, change my mood, change my attitude. And I'm viewing everything as an opportunity. I was feeling like a little bit of stress. Like there was just a lot happening specifically work wise, but then also personal and just trying to balance everything, but also make time for myself. Yeah. And I was getting overwhelmed, but I've now reframed this into being an opportunity and positivity. So I am trying to put out more positive energy. Yeah. So when more things come to me, I can view them in a positive light. And I think that goes to your quote of yeah. putting out the energy you want to attract. Yeah. I think this is really prevalent in dating too. Yes. If you come off as maybe insecure or not confident in yourself, you're probably not going to attract the most confident person in the room. And then I always bring back to, or this concept brings me back to when I found Matt or when he found me or I connected with someone really, really authentically. It was always during an era when I wasn't looking. I wasn't, I didn't have that scarcity mindset or like really, really eager to find a certain type of someone. It Mm -hmm. was always an era of me taking really good care of myself and me not needing anybody, anyone else and having the mindset of I'm not going to entertain anyone else's energy unless it adds a value to my own. And so it just works in your favor when you have been working on yourself and you're putting out an energy that like people are literally attracted to. Yeah. Because when you're happy and you are feeling your best and your energy is is, up there, people, it People gravitate towards it. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite compliment I've ever received is you have an infectious energy that breaks up a room. There's nothing better. Who wants to be known for? Yeah. You kind of suck the energy out of the room. Like you got to figure your stuff out. Yeah. Energy like, drainers are the worst type of people. And yeah. people talk about it. Yeah. And people feel it. You don't even have to you talk about it. You just, you can give the look and you know. Exactly. We, we all know those people in our lives that you just can't, you need to protect your own energy by setting up a boundary. Maybe someone you've been friends with forever. Maybe it's a family member, but it's someone who takes more from you than gives to you. And that's honestly the worst it's like who wants to be known for oh I can only spend like an hour with this person that I gotta get out so they don't they don't impact the rest of my day or like I can only take so much of them no truly the worst the catalyst for me wanting to change around my attitude of this whole thing was I was feeling like I was the energy drainer yeah around other people like I would show up to functions and I would just simply be exhausted and I'm like I am not adding any value here And I'm also draining myself even more yeah. just by like forcing myself to go out and be there and like try to show up, but not showing up in the best way. Yeah. And I was like, I, the last thing I ever want to be is an energy drainer. Yeah. So that was a very big reflective moment. I'm like, here we go. We're going to restart, reframe. Yeah. Do all the things. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's, I think awareness is the first step, obviously, but when you know, when you're around people that give you good energy, I think it just becomes infectious and you want to do that for other people and it works both ways. So if you've experienced energy drainers and you're not feeling your best self and like you're not bringing your best self, then I think it's smart of you to reevaluate and see how you can pivot and do something internally that makes you become that energy giver again. But yeah, it's everything is so circumstantial. It depends on the room that you're in. It depends who you're with. It depends on what's going on in your life, how stressed you are. And In my current position, it's so interesting work-wise because I work so closely with the founder of an extremely successful company and an angel investor, right? I think this has made me even more tune with energy as a whole. Like when things are stressful, it radiates across the, the, the team. Yeah. If things are really exciting, it builds momentum with everyone else. And specifically with my company, if y'all have no idea, brief background, it's called Create and Cultivate. It's an events and media company. We put on retreats and large scale events specifically for ambitious women that are looking to grow personally and professionally. So a lot of it is maybe conferences that help women with mind, body and business. There's programming, there's education um, to help people level up and hit their milestone in their businesses. And my founder, who started this 
12 years ago is someone that has been able to curate an energy in a room that people pay money to attend to get into the right room with the right people that have good energy. Like it, I don't want to say the business was built around energy because I don't think that was the intent of it, Yeah, but it's so crazy. And outside of her, there's other people in my life that you can just see like, they're going to be a successful human. Any like they're doing good in this world. And those are the people that I would invest in or want to spend time with day in and day out. It's like, there's this one friend of mine, Cameron in New York city. Mm -hmm. She's just so confident. She's so educated. She's so well put together. If she asked me to do anything or like, hey, do you want to start uh, a Zoom call once a week with like girls that are looking for a community in COVID? I'm like, yeah, immediately, yes. Whatever you want me to do, Cameron, I'm there for it. That was because, niche because it actually because it actually happens. <laughs> Such a niche, random example. But it's like when people when people radiate this amazing energy, it's easy for anyone to get behind them. As we start growing up in life, like maybe your friend that has putting something great into the world starts a business. You want to immediately invest in that business because you believe in that person. And so as silly as the word energy may sound, it means so much. much. Uh, What's your second quote? Oh, um, don't adapt to the energy in the room, create the energy in the room. I think that's a nice reminder when you're going into whatever room, whether it's work, family, friends, uh, what you put out can change the whole thing. The exactly. attitude you bring in, how you carry yourself, the energy you bring in. Now I'm like so conscious of the energy, <laughs> energy, but the energy that you show up with yeah. can change an entire room. Yeah. And I think it's a good reminder that you don't have to be reliant on others. Yeah. You can change everything. Exactly. Which is really powerful. It is powerful. Yeah. But if you have, if you're low energy and you enter a room with low energy, it's, you have to make that conscious decision of, do you want to change this around or you, do you want to be low vibes? Yeah. And totally up to you, but I'm now in a sales role. So if this really applies here, like I'll get on a call with someone and I make a a determination. Do I want to match this person's energy? And if they look like they don't want to be here or they're, I don't know, they have a wall up for whatever reason, or do I want to come in and be super charismatic and, and make them remember the conversation? And I like to think I choose the latter, but yeah, it's very powerful. Like you, can decide how you want to be remembered by. I think Joe told me that matching, it's like a sales tactic. Like you're always supposed to match their energy or something. I like what you just said. Yeah. It's like being remembered. But I don't know. He like randomly said that one day. Yeah. I said something about matching energy and he's like, yeah, that's the sales. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You're supposed to match their energy so that they feel comfortable. But then throughout the conversation, you can change it. Yeah. Like you can twist. If someone has a really negative energy, you or the person that can twist it. Yeah. The concept of matching people's energy is my favorite when we talk about friendships. Yeah. And I think that's why we are who we are. I've never found anybody in this lifetime that matches my energy the way that you do. Yeah. And that is why we can simply have so much fun, whether we are lounging, absolutely chilling in the lowest of vibrations. Yeah. But we're matched and the vibes are up yeah (laughs) or we go out and we're in one of our chaotic moods even if one of us is not in the chaotic mood the other one can get the other person there yeah and we match it we show up yeah and that is why every time we go out we have the best time ever yeah we're always having a great time because we're matching each other's energy yeah we're a unit we are a unit we come to our molecules come together (laughs) like it is we are one yeah But my favorite is when you have someone that's so close to you and you can literally ask them, all right, so what's the energy? How are we feeling? What's the vibe? And if you say, all right, I want to, I want to stay in tonight. I'm, I'm not feeling it. I'm like, perfect. Let's do that. And like, we can bring the same amount of energy to the situation, depending on what it is. Guys, my brain fog this morning, I, I got five hours of sleep. I came late. I'm drinking a very subpar coffee. Let's talk about subpar coffee for a second. Let's, Let's do digress. It. Let's digress. <laughs> okay. So Joe and I have the Breville espresso maker. He's been making me coffees. And we do a double espresso 
usually over ice, although I am drinking hot this morning. We use the Nespresso milk frother with vanilla syrup, milk, cinnamon on top. Mm -hmm. He has perfected the ratio. So great. The other day he's like, all right, um, I'm going to make your coffee, but we are out of vanilla syrup. I was like, oh, one, how could you let this happen? Two, (laughs) okay, it's fine. Like, I'm still going to drink it. So he makes it, brings it over. I'm like, thank you so much. I go to take a sip. It tastes like nail polish remover. I, for a second, my brain literally like warning, warning, flashing, flashing. I'm like, what did you put in here? (laughs) I, for a split second, I actually thought he poisoned me. (laughs) I made him taste it. And it was just like a really jarring feeling. It was a split second. And then my instincts came over and I was like, okay, he, there's no way he poisoned me. But it was right before he was leaving. And I was like, poison control. yeah, he was going to head out for the golf trip or whatever. And I was like, he poisoned me and he's going to leave. My tongue felt like it was going numb. I was really getting What so did he nervous. do? I don't did know. Did he put vanilla extract in it? No, maybe? no. I think it was just really bitter coffee or something, yeah. and it didn't have the correct the balance. Sweetness. Yeah, I don't know. I made him try it. Did Long he agree? Story short, no. He's like, I don't taste anything. I'm like, mm. mm, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I don't believe you. So I'm still living. He, it didn't work, <laughs> but I would just like to say, keep your guard up, ladies. <laughs> you never know. Today, so Matt and I always have cold brew in the fridge from yeah. like the Starbucks one that you could get at any grocery store. And I'm very particular about my coffee as I am with everything else in my life. And wait, <laughs> we were, when we were setting up, court was here and I was adjusting like the shade and she's like, no, 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 that's too dark up. And I was like, okay, I pull it up. She goes down just like one inch. I'm like, she goes one more. She's like, yep, that's perfect. I was like, why is this your coffee order? No. <laughs> and to anybody else on the planet, a drop of the almond milk doesn't make a difference. Very important. Very, very, very important. important. Like this color is no bueno today. Like what is this color? I made I it myself, anyway. but Courtney needs the exact ratio. It needs to be the right color. It needs to be the right strength of the espresso or I'm, the coffee. I'm with it with cocktails too. Like I you will are. not drink it if something's off and you know what? They should just put me in the back. Like I should be back there. Put her in the back. I go, it's going to save both of us so much time and energy. Just let me make my own drink, please. And thank you. Courtney's also always the designated bartender whenever we're together, whenever there's a yeah. weekend. Yeah. And I wouldn't really want it any other way. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. But back to my subpar coffee. Yes. I always have some sort of cold brew in the fridge. Sometimes it's La Colombe, sometimes it's Starbucks, whatever's available at the grocery store at the time. And Matt bought the Starbucks cold brew yesterday because we were out and he bought the medium roast unsweetened and it was supposed to be the dark roast. And so I'm pouring my coffee this morning and I go, hey Matt, he's like, what? I go, you bought the medium roast. He's like, I thought you liked the medium roast. I was like, I like the medium roast of the La Cologne, but the dark roast of <laughs> Starbucks. We've been over this. He goes, you better watch yourself. There might not be any more cold brew coming from me. I go, perfect. Let me do it. <laughs> so yeah, that's why my color is quite hideous, but it's drinkable nonetheless. But now I have two, not one, but two. He bulked up. So here I am with my medium roast, unsweetened. Oh, that's tragic. I'm really sorry. Yeah, I know. Literally My thoughts are with terrible. you in this dark Thank time. you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Back to energy. Back to energy. I remember what I wanted to tell. To okay. Say. If you want to know me personally, this is a really good indication of who I am and my spirituality. I see a psychic more than I see a therapist. That's probably an iconic quote that we need on a (laughs) t-shirt. I am obsessed with that. And my psychic tells me time and time again, when you put up a wall to protect yourself, you're blocking other energy from coming in. (laughs) Literal wall. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And I've, when you think about it, it is so true. A lot of people... I'll I'll relate it to dating or 
meeting new people out and about a potential friend of yours. The more vulnerable you are, the more they will be able to match that and be vulnerable. The more you have a wall up and maybe you're not trusting or you just don't care to let your guard down, there's no way other people are going to get through to you as well. So the same way that you match someone's energy, if you're trying to get to know someone or if you're trying to maybe find a person, you can't have a wall up and be super guarded because it's never going to work out in your favor. I agree. I like that. And I think that's a really good reminder. Yeah. Not to say that you shouldn't trust people immediately, but honestly, I trust people immediately. I do too. Until they prove me wrong. I trust you until I don't trust you. Until you give me a true reason. Yeah. And energy is so powerful that I feel like I have a good enough read on people to know if I should trust them immediately. Yeah. You know? Also, I think you're setting people up for failure when they have to build your trust. It's like, just trust them until they prove you otherwise. Exactly. Exactly. Let's talk about toxic negative energy, how not to feed it, and how not to get caught up in the cycle of negative energy because it can be so addicting. Yeah. So true. I find myself doing it, and specifically around drama. Ugh. And sometimes drama's good. I've heard all the girlies all over TikTok and other platforms say women were made for drama because it kept us safe. Like back in the day, that is how you knew. Ooh. Like the women had to tell each other because the men didn't tell them anything. So Like true. it literally kept them safe. Like we were meant to draw. I think a little bit of drama's good. It's how you bond all the things. My favorite but, drama is drama that doesn't involve me. Absolutely. Drama honestly never involves me. Yeah, we're not dramatic. I will. (laughs) There's a difference between (laughs) drama and being dramatic. Totally. I am dramatic. Yeah. I would not say I'm involved in drama. No, not at all. Our lives are a bit too vanilla. Stable. Stable. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. I like that. Similar to drama, how like people will repeat things over and over again. I feel like this can happen when you are hanging out a lot with somebody who has a glass half empty mindset yes and they're constantly saying oh this isn't working out for me oh of course this would happen to me that is the worst cycle to get caught up in you drive you're going to park somewhere you can't find parking oh of course I can't find parking like this always happens to me then you know what you're putting that energy out there now you're gonna get a ticket on top of that and then you're gonna come back and say Of course me, why me, poor little me. And then you just like keep going. That's the worst type of friend, one. But two, as their friend, it's easy for you to also hop on the complaint wagon. Yeah. Why do we do that? I feel like there has to be some psychology around it that it's fun to complain because I swear it is very difficult not to complain. Everybody loves to complain. Yeah, yeah. It's like almost a... uh, like trauma bonds people yeah, kind of like thing. Yeah, it's like a bonding moment. Yeah, even on a Zoom call, like, oh, it's raining today. Like the first thing people say. Yeah. It's like, why is that the go-to? Uh, I couldn't agree more. I want to literally praise the ground you walk on as you say that because truly my least favorite type of person. Yeah. Um, and secondly, uh, if you're comfortable enough with the person, actually, even if I'm not comfortable enough with the person, specifically in that parking situation, I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, nip that in the bud. Now we're we're not going to find parking because of that. Like, yeah. hello. Like, switch your mindset. This was Joe when we went to Felipe's. Oh. Um, immediately, Matt and I were like, oh, duh, we're going to find parking. Got yeah. a parking spot right outside. Yeah. And it's the reason I'm not going to get a parking ticket today or Absolutely. a towing situation today. Because I'm parked very illegally, but I told myself... Not today, Satan. No. no way. There's no. I I do me. too much good into the world to receive that in return. Absolutely. You know. Yep. Yep. So I think the first step here is what you need to be aware of if your friend is doing this, and if you're close to them, I would literally. My favorite thing to call out is being is to say. Why are you negative? <laughs> Why are you being so negative right now? Like, yeah. turn the attitude around. And I give them the whole spiel about their energy and how they're only going to attract more negative things if they keep it up and if you are not comfortable with like saying that with whoever you're with don't answer like don't yeah. react don't give them any praise yeah how embarrassing would it be like oh like I just have the worst luck 
silence. Bitch, I don't want bad luck, so get away from exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> like, don't ask, why? What happened? Oh, my God, I know. Like, I hate when these things happen. Because then you go back and forth. Yeah. And you're building up the bad. Yeah. And there's no good. So I feel like when you identify those people, one, just get them out of your life. Because oftentimes they can't change. But two, don't even respond. No. No. And I think... In being a friend, like we're, I guess we're talking about toxic people in general. Yeah. But there are also times when friends go through toxic situations and like they deserve to complain and you want to be a good friend. So you entertain it. And that is 100% okay. Honestly, encourage. Like, one of our friends is actually going through a breakup right now. And this is something that we've never really experienced. Yeah. To at this stage in our life, at least. Yeah. And so it's like great. We listened to all of the things we contributed to the conversation, like to make everybody feel better in the situation. And now it's like, all right, moving forward, we're done. We're done talking about it. We're done dwelling over it. We've chatted and kind of talked through all of the emotions. And now it's time to reframe the situation as a positive and move forward. Otherwise, you're just going to get stuck in that cyclical thought pattern and it's going to be draining to be around like the person if it, if it continues, you know, yeah, absolutely. it's just not going to end up and good draining for, you. for the person. Dra- exactly. It's so hard for people that get caught up in the cycle specifically with men because they're just the worst. Um, but that can be such an addictive circle that is so unproductive and nothing changes. Nothing happens. You just continue to feel in this stale state and yeah. you're not being able to move on. Yep. So that can be really hard. And it's so hard being on the outside looking in. You're like, oh, just stop. When you're in it, like I do forget what that feels like. Yeah. It's so hard when you're in it. And oftentimes, no matter what anybody says to you, you have to figure it out on your own. Totally. You have to one day wake up and be like, oh, I'm in this toxic negative energy cycle. I got to get out yeah. on my own. Yeah. So, yeah, as a friend, sometimes you just have to be along for the toxicity until it turns around (laughs) exactly okay if you were listening to this episode and you're thinking oh yeah I know exactly the type of toxic people that they're referring to or you're questioning whether or not you have someone in your life that's more draining than they are giving this is the question you need to ask yourself are you proud to be this person's friend and be associated with them you also need to ask yourself how am I feeling being around this person? If I leave the person and I'm like, oh, so grateful to be out of there or like can't do another, can't see them for another week, month, et cetera, I think that's when you should evaluate. And maybe you don't need to cut someone out of your life entirely, but you need to know if you're going to feel good or bad from the situation, monitor how much time you spend with them because toxicity and negative energy is contagious as much as infectious energy is. I was going to say this applies on the opposite side as well. When you find somebody who, when you leave a social interaction with them, you're like, wow, like I feel so good about myself. Reach out to them again. Yeah. Like, see them more. Those are the people you want to keep close to you. And yeah. ideally your circle is a bunch of energy givers. Yeah. And they build you up and you can do the same for them. Exactly. That's how it should be. Yeah, you're just overflowing the cups back and forth. It's so beautiful. Life is too short. Life is too precious. We're on a floating rock. We're here to have fun. Yeah. We're here for a short while. Make the most of it and be surrounded by people that fuel you. That is truly a reminder I need every day. Yeah, and, and motivate you too. Yeah. I think we can close out this episode with... How we're elevating our own energy. Let's just throw some things out there that we've been doing. Things we've seen, enjoyed recently that have just lifted our vibrations. Mm -hmm. First thing for me is post-work plans. Mm -hmm. But not too many post-work plans that overwhelm me. I've noticed that it's very easy for me to basically not cut off my work day unless I have a a real reason to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel guilty because I'm like, oh, there's always more to do in my work situation right now. But nothing fuels me more and gets me more excited to live life than to live the life outside of work that we should be having. So I would say 
post work plans, but sprinkle in some some low vibration plans, some chilling on a couch, a wine night with a close friend, maybe sprinkle in a summer concert or something a bit more high vibration. But that's been really making sure I have good energy throughout my weeks. Yeah, I like that. I was going to say more recently, I've been loving one, a glass of wine, period. (laughs) I missed wine. I went through a couple months this spring and early summer where we forgot about wine and how amazing it is. So just a nice glass of, honestly, rosé. Court brought up a delicious uh, rosé. But also a glass of red wine, even in the summer, it's just hitting. But then you pair that with some girly pops and you're just sitting on a couch, chit-chatting. The Bachelorette is obviously back on. Yep. I want to start bringing Tuesday night Bachelorettes. Whoever's around, people can come over. We can rotate the place. Yeah. Tuesday night so we don't have to stay up past our bedtime. Yep. Show up in PJs. Put a face mask on. Come yeah. with your pimple patches. Yeah. Like, let's have a glass of wine, giggle, and, like, judge the men on yeah. the screen. Yeah. That sounds so fun. So that's been lifting me up. I'm looking forward to those activities. Yep. Next one for me is celebrating the small wins. Like, yeah. truly. What like, have you celebrated recently? Um, I celebrated making it to this podcast this morning after a concert. Absolutely. Yeah. You're doing both. Yes, I am. I'm celebrating turning my laptop off yep. at a normal time. Yeah, I'm I love celebrating that. letting my body rest this week as opposed I didn't I went to the gym once this week which is I don't remember the last time I went that infrequently yeah but guys Ashley and I went water skiing last weekend oh my god I've never been so sore truly in my life I contemplated whether I was getting COVID because I had (laughs) aches pains and fatigue I'm like oh my god I've never felt this muscle in my bicep or this tendon so sore in my life I had Matt need to literally like walk on my back and yeah. crack it multiple times this week but it was also because number one I'm not a water skier I didn't grow up doing that so I learned how to water ski and I got up for the first time successfully last weekend but then Ashley and I were trying to be creative and <laughs> literally Ashley bought these fun boys, these huge, iconic floats, and we were trying so hard to get towed in them by Matt and Joe on a jet ski, so we're holding on to a rope for dear life. Like a water ski rope. Yeah. We're each sitting on our floats. On a flotation device that's not meant to be dragged in the water. Literally, like... (laughs) float would come off underneath us and we'd be dragged and the float like goes completely underwater like you get waterboarded yeah like, oh, it's working yeah. <laughs> you, you low-key start to drown I think I'm I'm also allergic to so many environmental stuff so yeah. I think I wasn't feeling well because I consumed so much lake water and was just out in the wild a little bit too much <laughs> oh it's so funny so yeah Proud of that. Pr- proud for not feeling guilty about not moving my body at all this week. What wins have you been celebrating? Um, honestly, I've been celebrating the fact that I have just been making it through my work day and my head's above water and celebrating opportunities that are coming into my life. Yeah. Um, another thing that's giving me energy is the fact that I'm here this weekend in Boston. Yeah. For the first time in weeks. That I could do my laundry this week without <laughs> just only washing what I need to repack. Yep. That's a win. That's what I'm celebrating. That has me feeling really good. Yeah, I love that. And then another home item is I got this duvet from Amazon and I will absolutely share it on the Instagram. I got a new duvet insert and a new duvet cover. It is a real life cloud. I wake up every morning in absolute heaven. I look forward to crawling into bed, and it's really changed my life. I love that. I meant to ask you for the link so I could get it on Prime Day, but I think that's over. It's not that expensive. You should get it anyways. Perfect. We are sending you off with the best energy. Cut out the toxic energy in your life, or limited at least. And if you counted how many times we said energy... There's a there's a prize for someone that gets the exact number. We'll give you a you can do both hat. We'll ship it for free.
we should do that. Yeah, we should. We can put our transcript in chat, chat GBT and have it uh, count for us. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Well, love you guys. If you love us, you can share our podcast with a friend. Subscribe. Leave us a good review. Follow us on all social media. And that's a wrap. And we'll talk to you next week. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.